In this video, I'm going to learn how to create some simple filters in JavaScript only. We'll use the layout about the grid display from the other video. So if you want to understand what's going on here with the grid and the media queries and all, make sure to check that video that's around there or in the description and then come back to this one. The first input that we are going to create is going to be something like this little body here, a search bar. But instead of searching for websites, it's going to search for items. And for that, let's come here to our document. The document is only with five figures, so five products. This div has all the products. Every single figure is a single product. And uh, well, let's come to the main and create a div. This div will have a class of center. We are going to make it after it. Center. And now we are going to create here an input of the type text. The name is not needed, but ID is cool. An ID of search bar. Then you can also apply something like a placeholder. You'll have something written when you are not writing anything. Something like search for a product. This is the HTML. Let's check how it's looking. Okay, it's really looking pretty ugly. Let's also apply a class. The class of the search bar as well. So they are the same and it's easier to remember and all. There we go. Now we are going to create here a class and we are going to also put the class of center. This one, the center is going to only center with the display flex and justify content center. In the search bar, what will it do? We are going to put here some more width, something like 30 RAM, high, 7 RAM, font size, 3 RAM, padding to RAM, border radius to RAM. This is just something pretty random, it doesn't matter how it yours look like. Okay, we are going to increase a little bit more the width of to 36 and the height to 5. Okay, it seems a little bit small yet. Okay, there we go, it looks nice. Now we are going to also apply a margin, a margin of 1 RAM. And there we go, I think it's pretty nice already, the search bar. Now to create this search bar, this filter of search bar, you will need to have some specific things into your HTML structure. If you come down here, you can see that this div has all the products. However, what we want is every single product to be shown or hidden depending on what he writes. And in order to do that, we need to make a comparison. What's here? What's doing here? What's happening here? What's up? First thing is obviously come here to the paragraph, which is the scared monkey. As the name says, this is the name. This is something like the product name. You can also do the same with the product description if you want to. Here. But we are going just to put to the product name. And in here we are going to put product name. And we also need to apply it for every single item. So the Arnold Gorilla is also a name. The Big Monkey is another name. The Old Rider Monkey, an old name. And then the Banana. Banana eater monkey, it's not the banana, it's the monkey that eats the banana. Then we are also going to need to do another little thing, which is going to be coming here on the input, we are going to put a function that's going to call a JavaScript function. And in this case, it could be the on key up. It could also be on key press, on key down, it's up to you. But on key up, it's the safest version and it's only when you release the key. In this way, it will always, but always, firstly, get the information and only then execute the function. Either way, you could simply bug and don't capture what we are writing. Now we are going to call the function. Since we don't have a function, we can create the name now. Search items. No, search bar. Search bar, it's, it's fine. Then you don't forget to put the parentheses after the name. And this is it, guys. So the HTML, the last thing we need to do is coming down here and apply the script tag. You can either write it inside here or add a source and put uh, script.js or filter.js. It's really up to you. Now I'm going to come here, new file, and script.js. This script.js needs to have a function with this name we chose previously. You can either create a function, the name, and blah blah blah, the normal syntax, so you can also create the arrow syntax, the arrow function syntax. It's really up to you. It doesn't really change anything in this case. There are cases that the arrow function is really needed, but in this case, it's, it's up to you. It's cooler. Then what we need to do next is retrieving the data. And how do we retrieve the data? To receive the value that the user is writing. I want to hear a gorilla. I would write gorilla like here. But how do we get the value of this input here? I've already given it to you. Come here and say that the search bar, we are getting it by the item, not by the class, but the item. So var items equals to document.getElementById, get element by ID, then put here. 
as a string of course because it's how it is and then you can alert items dot value which is the value of the items what's written in it we don't use any html in this case because since it's an input what's written in there it's always a value because it's an input it's to be sent to forms or used in javascript now if you load a page and start writing something we'll already start receiving what we are writing so m o e n you see every time you write something it will give us an update oh it's not items this one i want to be search value search value or something like that the items are going to be equals to document dot get elements by class name two things to note first is get element by id or get elements by class name here it's an s we are going to receive multiple elements why because there can be multiple elements with the same class so this function will always but always return an array not only that but we also need to get the class so there we go product name in this way we are receiving an array of the items now we can already start creating the loop how will the loop work well you come here for var i as in every loop equals to zero i less than the items dot length in javascript we have that function that will return the length of an array i plus plus the i gets bigger every time we make a loop with the loop done we need to start making conditions and to do that we are going to use an if because switch doesn't work in here at all then we are going to use the items select the index because we are using an array you need to run every single product dot in html why not value because we are working with a paragraph and the paragraphs have in html don't have any value at all dot we are not going to receive any of these no oh the includes there we go we are going to use the includes because we are going to verify if the search value it's actually inside of any of these product names then we are going to put here the search value inside the parentheses and dot value because we want to receive the value so we are going to compare the value to the name with this it's pretty much already almost working you see let's add another pair of parentheses it's going to cover the whole condition and put exclamation mark this way i found it easier because we are going to reverse it in the case that the name doesn't coincide with what we are writing what is going to happen we are going to put items i dot style dot display equals to none why display none instead of visibility hidden because the display none will completely remove the necessity of showing anything there while the visibility hidden will of course show anything but will occupy that space and you want that space to be removed now let's have a look of how it's working already so m and uh, as you could see this isn't really working too well one thing is sure since the gorilla doesn't have m in any part of the name since it doesn't have money in the name it got its name removed but that's not really what we want we want the item the product to be removed so we are going to need to, instead of going to the items we need to go to the parent node what does that mean if you are here in the product name instead of actually removing the product name we want to remove the product text but no the product text will only remove the name price and description we also want to remove the image for that we need to go to the parent of the parent the grandparent the single product so we need to put another parent node and in this case it should already work come here disappeared however it doesn't come back when you remove which is a really big problem to make things appear again when uh, nothing is there with the text isn't wrong we just need to put here exact same line but instead of none we need to put the previous display so in this case the single product has a display of grid if you don't put any display at all in the specific item you want to well make this appear you can put it block because the big majority of the elements in html are block otherwise they can also be in line but then you need to test it yourself i'm going to put mine in grid because it's what it is so if i put here m it disappears but when i remove it comes again however there's another problem we have some monkeys and i put a small m the lowercase m and it doesn't find anything because this search it's case sensitive and to remove this case sensitiveness we need to come here and put after the linear html i believe yes dot to lower case and parentheses never forget the parentheses after the function and in this case what you are going to do is making the items here as lower case so if i put monkey it will find however if i put just as the name is 
it doesn't work again because this way we are just making these lower guys and allowing the user to put lower guys but it's not going to work this way we need to come here we need to copy this lower case and also put it in the value and in this way it will always work no matter what case it is lower or upper case you can also instead of put to lower case you can put the both to upper case it's the same thing we just converge them and then compare them this way it's going to always work now with this simple search bar filter we are ready to go to the second and also last filter of this video which is going to be a price filter imagine you have 90 70 100 10 and 20 and we want to make something that will only show prices that are lower than what we choose we could use the checkbox the select box the radio you could also learn the input type text or number but if you want to use any of the three first that i've mentioned the checkbox the radio or the select option well there's a video i've done right previous than this one you'll be able to understand how they work and how to get data from it just click on it and then come back to this video however we are not going to use any of these inputs i'm going to create another div of class center there we go then we are going to also put here an input however this one is going to be of the type range this is going to have an id this is going to be range price it's up to you the name of course the id then we don't need the name the id is just fine we also need to put the mean i'm going to put it to zero and the max 100 the step i'm going to set it as 10 so it's going to jump 10 10 10 then i'm also going to put here the on input function it's really like the on key up but instead of well on key up because we are not going to use keys we are going to click and change you could be on change but on change is a little bit bugged with the range so on input it's better every time we change the value it is going to well get updated get called function we are also going to set a value which is going to be the starting value 100 the maximum it's it's fine and uh, well i think it's that's all now we are also going to create here a span with uh, the id of real time price and you are going to put here the zero euro as default the 100 euro should be fine in this case what we are going to do is every time we change this we want to also change this so we by moving the slider we'll also show what's the current value of the slider and we'll also show and hide the products then putting here a function price filter it's fine and in here you almost forgot right but no i i don't forgot i never forgot because i always have a document where i read the script so i usually don't forget now here every price paragraph needs to also have a class which could be something like product price and in this case the product price is going to be responsible to return an array which will work pretty much like the product name however we are going to make conditions with the price of course then let's copy this name and create the function down here let equals to parentheses because we are not really receiving any parameters at all we are just going to copy these two the product name instead of product price Okay, there we go product price is the one we are going to work with the price filter and the search value instead of search value is going to be the range price there we go this is going to be the, the thing range price now we need to put range price there we go and we need yet another thing for this to work which is going to be the real-time price real-time price is going to be equals to the document dot get element by id then put the id in there we go and the first first thing we are going to do it's making this real time work so we can already see if it is changing or not so we are going to come here put the dot inner html is going to be equals to the range price dot value and we are going to also concatenate this euro symbol so if you come here reload the page it's going to also start at the maximum but when lower it it will as you can see it's pretty easy to understand it's going to change every time we also change oh and the steps if you didn't understand it's that every time we just move a little bit it will always change 10 values now another thing that i forgot i and i just said that i don't forget anything it's about the product price we are going to remove all these zeros because with this symbol it doesn't matter if it's euro or if it's dollar it doesn't matter it, the only thing is that if we convert this to a number it cannot be converted come here to the style and say that every product price will have after it the content of euro so it will appear not as a tangible thing but as a style and in this way you cannot even select the price 
the hero symbol. Next thing you're going to do, it's just this for loop, just the same thing. You just can copy or make it again, but it's going to run through every item and it's going to increase itself every time. Then we are going to put here the curly brackets and we are going to make some conditions. However, let's just put the show and hide already so you don't forget it, just like me. Then you are going to put here an if with the curly brackets and curly brackets are going to get closed down here. And now we are going to also put here the exclamation mark to make it the opposite. And inside this parenthesis, which is going to be changed, we are going to put here the items index dot in html dot parse you need to put the parse previously parse float why because prices can of course be integers however they can also be floats they can have the 99 and 99 instead of 100 euros then you can also put the another one as well the parse float blah 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 there we go okay yes we can put the next one instead of items we are going to put you the range price and dot value because since it's an input it will also work with value then let me check yes the parentheses are looking fine the problem here is that we don't have a condition and the condition is going to be bigger or equals so otherwise if it's smaller it will show if it's bigger or equals it will hide but we can also remove these equals if you want to it will also work it will simply in include the ones that are equals to show and the ones that are not equals to hide pretty simple then if you have a look it should be already working well it's it's bugging a little bit this ranger okay it's not working at all what's the problem here guys well the problem here is that you need to put it the opposite because when i was doing it previously i did uh, the range price first and then the items but now well we need to change it for this sign here the bigger side looking to the range price okay guys i found the bug you see here it's all right however if you come here <laughs> it's product name <laughs> it should be <laughs> product price guys i'm sorry i don't know why at some point i should have uh, put a control z you see now we come here it's already working well i'm so stupid but now well as you can see it's already working and it's showing and hiding every display when you see and it needs to be shown when it can be shown it will show and hide stuff so if you want to make some changes you can simply put here to start it from zero right the rest is up to you if it starts as zero it starts at zero and in here as well and if you want it to show only what's bigger right you can change this in this way 50 what's bigger right only what it's bigger if you put bigger and equals the gorilla wouldn't disappear at the 70 well you can manage it however you like you can also put it with other types of inputs in this case i've just put this way but you can also set my parameter or set a value for each checkbox or for each radio and it will work just fine you can also put a min and max you can not put here like me where oh, what's what's above what's above uh, i show you can make something like what's between zero and 100 euros will be shown and what's outside this range will be hidden and in this case if you put here if the items out in html with the parse fault of course is bigger than zero and it is also smaller than 100 or bigger and equals and smaller and equals and you put here the exclamation mark you can hide here and i'll show up here with the grid or the block or the inline so this is it guys if you have any other idea of how to do these filters or have to apply it to your project you can always leave a comment that i will try to help you out i'm joe vegas and i'll see you in the next video